Hello, welcome back. After a very, very long time away, I'm back out on another wild camp. It's been a very, very, very long time. So what I've decided to do, seeing as I'm having a bit of a wild camping reboot, I've started, decided to go right back to where I started from. Um, my first ever solo wild camp was done, I think it was back in 2014, if I remember rightly. And I did went up to Grindslow Knoll. So I've decided, I've started from Edale, I've parked down Edale's behind me. I've started recording in pretty much exact same spot and I must stop looking at the screen, I must keep looking at the lens. I've pretty much started recording from the exact same spot. I'm going to take the exact same route and hopefully, as long as I can get a pitch, I'm going to camp in the exact same spot that I camped in all those years ago. Hopefully, I won't get battered by a storm and um, I promise, I promise there will not be endless footage of darkness with a voice and a shiny little patch off my baldy head from the only tiny little light and I promise there won't be lots and lots and lots of stirring. Anybody who's seen that first ever wild camping video that I posted will know exactly what I mean with that. It's still on the channel if you want a laugh go watch it. It's 35 minutes of me scared witless. I nearly swore then I wasn't scared but um, I was concerned let's say because it was blowing a hoolie and I had the, no light and it was all dark and stuff. So hopefully I can improve on that with this video but um I'll take you with me and see what we can do. I've got some kit to play with. You'll probably notice my pack is nowhere near as bulging as it was in the first ever video. I think I was carrying somewhere on about 18 kilos on that video. Ridiculous. I'm running quite heavy tonight, which I'll talk about later, but it's um, still a lot lighter than it was back then. So we're heading up to Grindslow Knoll. Hopefully there'll be nobody there. There is an England game tonight. Um, I don't know, I lost interest in football quite a few years ago. I think it might be a quarter-final match or something. I know England are through the group stage in the Euros. It's the 3rd of July, 2021. Anybody who's interested will know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, hopefully everybody will be in the pub watching the football and I'll be uh, out on the hill. So, behind me is the top summit, whatever you want to call it, of Grandslow Knoll. I don't think I've been here since I did the, um, my first wild camp. I'm pretty sure I haven't been back. This little spot down here is where I, um, where I pitched my, uh, what was it? Looks Outdoor Mini Peak 2. Cracking little tent that was, cracking little shelter. I had trouble pitching it. Um, I'd never pitched a, a mid type shelter before and um, it didn't go too well, but it held up. Last time as I was pitching, looking over my shoulder in that direction, there was a hell of a storm brewing. Tonight, it doesn't look too bad over there. However, the prevailing wind's coming from that way. <laughs> And I've just heard a couple of, uh, just clear that notification, I've just heard a few rumbles of thunder from way over in the distance. And there's a lot of similarities to last time I was up here. There are, There is a possibility of thunderstorms, which there was last time. And um, I think I used the term, I need to be prepared to GTFO. Um, but I didn't have to. I did get caught in a massive storm. Um, the tent took a battering. But it held up. It was a, it was a good little shelter that uh, mini peak. I haven't got the mini peak tonight. I've um, had to pick up a new shelter, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, yeah, lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. So sun's going to set behind me. Storm is coming from over there, but looking in that direction, wow. Now then, this is what I've been missing. This is why 
I'm back here tonight. Because I've been missing this so much and I haven't been, well, I haven't done a wild camp for about three years, four years, something like that. I don't think I made a video for about five years. Um, I stopped making videos before I stopped camping. Um, I'll explain, I'll talk about that maybe in this video, maybe in a later video, there are reasons for it. Um, and I sold all my kit and thought that was done. I thought I wasn't doing any more wild camping ever. So I sold, well, all my big ticket stuff. I've hung on to some of it, which I've still got behind me now. But I've kept in touch with a few people. Um, say kept in touch, I've held on to a few Facebook friends um, that I sort of made over that time. And uh, constantly watching their posts and I've stayed in a couple of the, the, the sort of the bigger wild camping groups on Facebook just to keep an eye on what was going on. And I keep seeing people like Elton O'Brien, Peter Dixon, Phil Jackson, um, oh, Andy, Andrew Beavers posting amazing trips. And just now and again, I've been getting a little pang. Just, I want to do that. I want to get back out. But of course, when you've sold all your kit, it's an expensive game, isn't it? This uh, wild camping malarkey. But I've managed to do it. I'll explain a bit more in a little while, I think. But for now, I think I'm going to get my tent pitched. I think I'm going to ignore that thunder for now. <laughs> I'm going to pitch the tent and um, take a chance. Here we go. Well, hopefully, if that uh, little hyperlapse thing's worked, you'll have seen me pitching my tent in a rainstorm. Isn't that beautiful over there, look? Wow. Um, yeah, there's another one coming through. So, <laughs> I made a call. I was looking in that direction and I could see dark, thick storm coming. And over this way, I could see sort of showery type rain coming towards me quite fast. And I could hear the thunder and see lightning flashing over there. And I thought, what do I do? Do I bail and go home or do I get the tent up and take a chance? And I thought, if I'm quick, I might just beat this shower. No, 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 I wasn't quick. I got drenched. <laughs> and it was one of those things where I thought, is it going to be just a shower? I'll get away without putting my waterproofs on, it'll blow through really quick. It went, uh, it went a lot slower than I expected, so I got quite wet. But um, uh, Montane Terra pants, they dry out really quickly. Um, my rabs in on Prima Loft thing, they'll dry out really quickly. I'm not too fussed. Um, but the tent is up. The glorious Nature Hike Cloud Peak 2. I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit, but the tent's up. There's another storm going through there. The main, or the first one's passed now. There's still sort of thunder rumbling in the distance. There was a few flashes of lightning and claps of thunder coming from over there. I didn't feel threatened, he said, cautiously. No, I did. I was quite scared at one point because there was a loud one went off over my head and I thought, oh God, is this where I go and meet my maker? Anyway, time to get the tent sorted out and I think I deserve a beer. Cheers. Here's to the beginning, the rebirth, the rebooting of my um, my wild camping, possibly, or hopefully. Let's just uh, turn that around a bit. So I'm in a tent. I'm on Kinder Scout, and uh, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm reasonably happy. Well, no, I'm very happy, in fact. Um, 
wet gears all down there drying. Um, I chuck my base layers on, you know, uh, sleep stuff. Um, I've got kind of a sleeping mat, but not very good. But um, yeah, I'm out at last on a hilltop for the first time since about 2017, something like that. It's been a long time. Uh, I had some time away. Mm. Started this off in 2014, I think. Carried on going to, I think it was 2017 when I finally gave up and just had to cash it in. All my videos are still up on my channel. I haven't taken any of them down, I don't think. Including the first one, which was done right here, which is why I wanted to come back here tonight. as this kind of symbolic reboot of the wild camping thing. Um, yeah, that, that was a funny video. That was a funny video. I remember coming out, I had like, I think it was like 18 kilos in that rucksack, man. It was just madness. It was Osprey Kestrel 68 bursting at the seams. Um, and then my video consisted of 50% uh, <laughs> just uh, seeing me stirring a pan <laughs> of the evening stirring me dinner and then the following morning stirring me porridge. And then the rest of it was pretty much me in darkness inside my Lux Outdoor Mini Peak 2 with one tiny little light above my head. And all you could see <laughs> was a glowing, like a little reflection of my bald head um, and in darkness and just his voice coming out of the darkness as the storm raged in and I was like expunging all my thoughts about how I felt in the middle of a raging storm on top of Kinder Scout for my first ever wild camp, solo wild camp at that. Um, but it was great. It was it was brilliant and I loved it and, and I, that set me off and, and I kept going and going and I went from all the budget gear that I started with and gradually upgraded it. I was a stay-at-home dad then as well so I didn't have a lot of money at the time. Um, so everything I, had, I was buying I had to either sell something to fund it or save a lot of money, save up for a while or rely on a, a, you know Christmas and birthdays and that kind of stuff. Um, but I ended up getting some quite nice gear together. If anybody's watched all my videos, you'll see how excited I was when I got my MLD Trail Star and um, when I switched from the uh, the um, Snug Pack Softy Elite, which weighed an absolute ton, um, to uh, a Rab Ascent 900, which again weighed a lot looking back at it. But um, it, it was it was a big upgrade at the time, and um, I switched from the Osprey Kestrel rucksack to a Gossamer Gear Mariposa, and I was I was upgrading all I was going heading. I wanted to get down to, the, to towards sort of them um, ultralight if I could. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I was uh, half the fun for me was, was upgrading all my gear, you know. Um, and I was just having a great time. I was coming out, I was meeting new people, I was, I was getting out all over the place, a lot of the time in the Peak District. And the reason for that was kind of why... So I've dealt with um, anxiety and depression for as long as I can remember now. Um, a lot of, uh, probably since I was a kid really, but as an adult for at least 20 years or more. Um, I don't think I've ever spoken about this on this channel. I have in, on social media and other ways. I'm very open about it. I don't keep it, you know, I don't, I don't um, shy away from speaking about it, but I don't think I've ever mentioned it on here. But what I found was wild camping. Coming out for a night on the hill if I was having problems, if I was, you know, depressed or if I was feeling really anxious about stuff for any length of time, coming out for a night on the hill was sorting me out. It was sorting me out. It was like a reset. And, like, if my missus saw me struggling, she'd be like, go and have a night on the hill somewhere. Go. So, and it worked. It was brilliant. It was really good. It was just clearing my head. It would reset everything and and, and, and I would be back to feeling great again after a night on the, night on the hill in, in a tent. Um, and that was that was brilliant. It was going really, really well. And then suddenly it flipped on me. I don't know why. I really don't know why. Um, I suddenly started getting massive like uh, separation anxiety, homesickness. I couldn't bear to be away from home. And uh, I found myself making daft excuses as to why I had, had to, excuse me, had to turn around and go home. In fact, one night, I can't remember where I was now, I pitched a tent. I actually had the tent pitched and I was sitting making a cup of coffee. And I just went, can't do this, need to go home. Packed up, came off the hill, got in the car, drove home. Um, I kept making daft excuses, oh, I've forgotten this, I've left that, I can't do this, this has happened. Just, I, I would always go out with the full intent of, of going camping, but I kept just turning around and going home. I stopped posting stuff on social media, I stopped doing the videos because I, th I wondered if it was that that was putting pressure on me, you know, to record a video and... Um, 
but no, I was still the same. And I, I kept trying and trying and trying. I might have got two or three camps out of it, maybe after I um, after I stopped doing YouTube. But I just couldn't keep going. And in the end, I just had to give in and said, look, I'm, I can't do this anymore. And I, and, I, and I quit. Kept on my gear for a while. Realised, you know, just to see if it came back. And every time I thought about coming out, I just got like scared not scared but pangs of anxiety and stuff and i knew it wasn't going to work so i made the decision sold all my kit plowed all the money into um my other hobby scale models which i build aircraft and tanks and that kind of stuff i've got a big shed in my garden full of all this lovely modeling stuff so i just sold all my kit and put all the money into that and that's been my hobby for the last four years 2017 i think it was four or five years um and i didn't think i would ever do any wild camping again but I've kept in touch with some people, you know, Facebook friends that I've met uh, during my time. And uh, seeing their adventures getting posted on Facebook and stuff and dipping into the odd YouTube video and this kind of thing. And just think, oh, I'd love to do that again, but I can't, I can't. And then a few months ago, I think it was um, Elton O'Brien. Uh, posted a load of pictures from a three-day trip he did solo across the Lake District. And I was watching them and I was just like, oh, I really need to do this again. I'm feeling like I'm ready again now. And uh, I, I kind of shrugged it off. And then saw somebody else post some stuff and I was like, oh, I've really got to get back into this. I really want to do it. But I've got no gear. You know, I sold most of my, my stuff. Certainly the big ticket stuff went. Um and uh, I, I, but I just I couldn't get it out of my head. I needed to do it, so I had a look round to see what I had, still had left, to, as, a, as like a, a basics to get me started. Um, not much was the answer. I still got my um, my cook kit, my you know my titanium pot and my storming Norman cone stove. Um, oh, I miss Norman. I used to like uh, the little chats with Norman. Norman Reeves sadly no longer with us. Um, I'll show you the cook system at some time. There's a video on my channel about it. Uh, lots of people are aware of it now, but I was one of the first to get it, um, and it was so good. I, I, I still use it now, and I don't can't see me ever swapping. I've got two of them in fact. Anyway, um, so I've still got the cook system with the you know, the lovely um, tread light -like gear, Cuban fiber stuff sack that um, Paul uh, made for me. I've still got me uh, me lovely. Uh, Alp kit, I think they call them Y beams, the MSR groundhog sort of imitations that Alp kit do. They're not very good, they bend and stuff, but I've still got them. Uh, and some titanium shepherd's hooks and me, uh, tread like gear, uh, peg bag, and um, a few other bits. I've still got my clothing, surprisingly. I've put a couple of stone on, but surprisingly, most of it still fits me, which is quite good. And I've still got my original. Look at this. Carry more explorer self inflating map. That's what I'm sleeping on tonight, people. That's what I'm sleeping on, anyway. So, I still had a few bits lying around, but I needed a tent, a shelter of some kind. Um, needed a rucksack. I have got an old Berghaus Arette 45, one of the original black and orange, black, orange, and gray Berghaus Arettes. I tried to use that, I tried to fill it up with gear, but it just wasn't comfortable. It's too small for me, it always has been, but it's got. I've used it in a lot of adventures and it's got a lot of sentimental value but um so I needed a rucksack I needed a tent I thought I needed a sleeping bag but then I remembered I've got this really cheap down bag that I bought off AliExpress loads of people bought these they were ages ages mass max um back in 2016 2017 everybody was buying them uh, 45 quid or something daft for a down bag they put a statement out saying all their down was ethically sourced i don't think it actually is looking back and it's rubbish it's not very good at all definitely only a summer bag it'll do for tonight i've got a cumulus tiaga tiger uh 360 quilt on order which is coming soon um so yeah i had some kit but i need to get some some essentials um now, when I was wild camping before, if anybody said, what tent should I buy? The rallying cry was, Van Gogh Banshee! And it was a standing joke, because everybody used to say, how good the Banshee, well, the Banshee's a fine shelter, but there are other better alternatives around, or there were then. This time around, it seems that, well, if you ask, what tent should I buy? The shout, the cry is, buy a Lanshan! Um, and to be honest, I like the look of the Lanshan. It does look like a good 
um, a good shelter and it fits my bill it's lightweight it's trekking pole style tent which is what I was used to from the trail star um, and I probably would have bought one but the other shout that often goes up is for the um, this nature hike cloud peak 2 more conventional tent it's got poles and things and there was a guy selling one brand new He'd never used it. He put it in his garden. It was supposed to be for a, um, a Lake District trip or something, which didn't happen because of lockdown. Um, so he literally sold it to me for what he paid for it. Um, uh, so effectively, it was brand new. I just didn't have the, uh, the, the 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 weight from China or the possibility of getting stung at customs. Although I don't think AliExpress gets stung at customs anymore. But hey, whatever. So I thought, you know what? I'll just go for it. It'll get me going for now. It's not my ideal tent. It won't. I won't use it for very long but it'll get me going. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I've done. I've got the Nature Hike Cloud Peak 2. I needed a rucksack as well. I've told you that, haven't I? And I ended up buying the um, Nature Hike, is it Rockfall or something it's called? Um, 50 plus 10 Dyneema rucksack thing. It's all right. It's all right. It doesn't fit all that well. Um, it's supposed to be a long length back, which should fit, but it's not very good. The drinks bottle pouch rides a bit too high up on the shoulder and that kind of thing but it'll do for now it cost me 70 quid it'll be fine until i can upgrade to something better because that's the thing i've got to prioritize what i buy so um as we're obviously we're in summer now but because i've got to buy things in stages by the time i've got all this kit lined up now it's going to be winter time so i'm trying to think ahead and buy stuff for winter and i've got to prioritize what i buy so first thing i've replaced is this so i've got the cumulus quilt on this way the next thing will be um, a sleeping mat. I'm probably going to go for the uh, Xtherm, I think. Looking at it all around, that looks like it's going to be the, the, the most suitable thing. Like I say, for now, it's got to do for winter. Um, and then I can start looking at more lightweight stuff from winter into next spring and summer, you see. I'm thinking ahead. I'm trying to plan and budget at the same time. So uh, so that'll be the next two things. And then I've got to think about shelter. Um, and I've been doing a lot of thinking about shelters. Let me just have a look outside. Yeah, I'm definitely on my own. There's an England game on tonight, isn't there? So I don't think there's many people out. Um, so yeah, I've been doing a lot of thinking about shelters. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> is the honest answer. Do I get something that I can just pick up quite conveniently? I like the look. I've been watching uh, Andy Andrew Beavers on YouTube. There's a brilliant channel. Watch his videos if you haven't. Um, he's uh, been using the uh, pretense soloist a lot, and I really like the look of it. I really do. It it, it suits me down the ground, and it's available because you can get it from Valley and Peak. And um, so I'm tempted to buy one of those as a, like an interim, but I think ultimately. I just keep coming back to Mountain Laurel Designs and I don't want another Trail Star. I've done the Trail Star thing. Um, and as much as I loved that thing, it was a brilliant shelter. Um, it's not without its sort of downsides. You know, you're crawling in on your hands and knees to get into it. You know, if you've got a low pitch and um, the fact that there is no door. It doesn't bother me. It never bothered me. In fact, I quite like not having a door because like now I'm looking out and got the views and everything. But because of how the door's configured you couldn't really sort of sit in it with the door open and benefit from the views really if that makes sense um so you know i don't want another trail star i've kind of done it been there and bought the t-shirt now so i'm looking at a dual mid with a solo winner um and i'm looking at cuban fiber so that's a lot of money um but um We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm also considering the um, tarp tent notch, the lithium one, the uh, the, the Cuban fibre notch. Um, there's a few. There's a few that I'm, I'm thinking about, but that's a fair way off yet. I need to get other things sorted. Sorry if I'm sniffling. I've got blooming air fever. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where we are now. Um, I'm, it's taken quite a bit to get here tonight, and uh, I sort of had a little bit of a... Not a wobble, but I kind of procrastinated a bit before I came out this morning, thinking, oh, you know, can I make an excuse or what? But um, 
And then I got up here and of course I saw that thunderstorm coming in. And there was my ticket. That was my ticket. That was the test. That was a proper test for me. I was looking at that storm rolling and I could see the odd lightning flash over there and I thought, there's my excuse. I've got every excuse now to pack up and go home because nobody's going to doubt me. You know, what are you going to do? Stick a tent up in, the, in a lightning storm? Uh, that's what I've done. I was determined. I just didn't want to bail. I just thought, no, I need to go. I need to do this. I need to do it. And I just stood here and I watched and I could see that the storm was going to pass over... Um, the uh, over towards the east from where I am now and there was a, a squall coming through straight over me which is what you'll have seen me putting the tent up in but I could see it was only fairly light relatively speaking and there was no foreboding clouds above so I thought if, if it carries on as it's going now the storm's going to pass me that's going to get over me out the way and then I looked at the forecast and it's supposed to all be blown out and dried up by 10 o'clock so I figured it would be daft if I started heading back down that hill it's half past seven eight o'clock and then two hours later it's fine which you know it's getting there now it's looking pretty outside it's dark over in the east but behind me it's fine so i'm glad i stayed that was a test for me I, I, if i was going to bail that would have been it um but i didn't and i'm here so uh yeah i'm warm i'm dry i'm sheltered Tent's pitched okay. I've had to go out and adjust a few things. I did a few modifications. I wish I'd never bothered now. It's a waste of time. But um, like I say, I'll talk about them another time. I'm just here and I'm having a hell of a time. And I'm out on a hill on my own. And uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. So I'm going to get some dinner on. I promise you. I promise I will not set the camera up and let you watch hours of stirring. I promise I won't. Because... That would be silly, wouldn't it? Only an idiot would do that. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to have some dinner and uh, I think I've got one more of these in the bag. So I'll uh, I'll have that and then I'll um, probably get some shut eye and uh, all being well. See you in the morning. I don't think I'm going to get any stars tonight. I think the clouds set in, possibly. I don't know. Could be clearing up. Uh, I'll see if I can get a sunset. And uh, maybe speak to you later. Maybe speak to you in the morning. We'll see. Well, getting a bit of a buffer to near. Um, fairly strong winds at the minute. Forecasts are all saying that from 11, 12 o'clock, well, it's now 11 p.m., um, the wind should be negligible through the night. It should be down to like five mile an hour. But at the minute, I'm taking quite a pummel in here. Um, nothing major. 20 25 mile an hour maybe it's 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 going hard in gusts i'm not too worried but it's just because it's a new shelter in it and i'm i'm like every time every time it takes a big wallop oh look at that something's bitten me look oh boy i've got a big lump there look someone's had a feast on me um uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm getting a bit of a bit of a pummeler. Like I say, I've looked at all the live forecasts uh, that I can get, and they're all saying through the night you'll be calm. So I'm hoping that this does calm down because I'm expecting ten pegs to start pinging any minute now. I don't think they will. I went round and double checked them a bit ago, but I've got my dinner on. I've got. Uh, <laughs> um, I had one of these before. It's a foil insulating stuff and I made a little bag out of it, pouch out of it so I can drop a dehydrated meal in to keep it hot but also I made it big enough so it doubles up as a little sit pad that's good isn't it um, so that's cooking away that's a fire pot meals chilli con carne uh, now I always used to make my own dehydrated meals um, I've got a dehydrator and stuff at home obviously otherwise I wouldn't be able to make my own would I um, but I was in go outdoors picking up some bits and bobs the other day and I thought oh you know what I'll just pick a couple of meals up so I got a I think it's adventure foods or something 
uh, a porridge thing. I think you call it adventurous breakfast or something daft like that. It's porridge with apples and stuff in. Um, I've got one of those for breakfast, but then I picked up a fire pot meals chili con carne. I'd seen a few people use them on YouTube and I thought they'd be alright and then it wasn't until after that that I saw some people use them on YouTube and lots of people on social media saying fire pot meals are a bit nasty. So um, I, um, I've i got a chilli con carne there that might not be very nice. Um, and then yeah, I've got Expedition Quality Adventure Food Expedition Breakfast which looks like it's just basically porridge with some nuts and apples and raisins. Um, so that'll be my brekkie in the morning. Uh, I've got about five minutes to go before I should be able to consume my chilli. Hopefully my tent doesn't blow away and I'll uh, speak to you in a bit. ta -ra. Well, good morning. <laughs> um, what a welcome back this has been. So the, um, the winds died down about probably midnight just after, as forecast predicted. And uh, all went calm for a little while. And then the rain came. And it, um, it must have been raining for a good hour or so through the night, quite heavy as well. Nothing to worry about. Drifted off to sleep, quite happy. Sunrise was at 4.45, set my alarm for 4.30. Not expecting much after last night. And when the alarm went off, I almost, almost just switched it off and went back to sleep. I thought, ah, I'll stick my head out and just have a look. Open the tent door. <laughs> First morning back on the hill. And I get an inversion. Well, it wasn't a full inversion, possibly valley fog. I'm going to take it as an inversion. Um, it was, well, it still is. Quite a lot of it left. Hope Valley is a full-on inversion. Vale of Edale was, ah, yeah, I'm taking it. That's an inversion. It was, it was lovely. Absolutely beautiful. Hopefully you've just seen a time-lapse sunrise as well and I'm sitting here with a coffee and a bag of porridge feeling just amazing, amazing. I couldn't have, um, I couldn't have asked for it any better. In that, I know I keep going back to that first video but that's what this is all about really. It's about me coming back to, to the beginning. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I said in that that I'm, I was glad that it was a, that I got stuck in a storm. I'm glad that the tent took a battery and I'm glad that it got me um, anxious and, 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 and worried and just concerned. Because it was like a baptism of fire, it was like straight in at the deep end, no messing around. You haven't come out on a nice sunny evening and, you know, said, oh, I'm a wild camper now. I came out first night on my own in a raging storm. And although it wasn't a raging storm last night, it was a fair old lick at times. There was some big gusts coming through. 
and um, obviously I had the little sort of double uh, little jeopardy with the lightning going over it as I was pitching and stuff and the rain and everything else it it, it, it was a good welcome back uh, it was a good little test for the tent um, I've just gone around and checked everything's solid as a rock on that thing um, I can't fault it to be honest uh, no it's it, it it hasn't shifted at all um, and then to wake up and get, get a sunrise and an inversion on the back of it it's just like everything I, I could want the only thing the only thing I could have wished for better was I was <laughs> in a foot of snow but um, oh man this is fantastic I'm so happy so happy now so time now is um, if I can find my watch time now is 20 past 5 Sunday morning and I'm just debating what to do I'm half tempted to take a wander along the Jacob's Ladder or have a wander down to Ring and Roger and go back down that way um, or I may just go straight back off and go straight home I think in the spirit of me reenacting my first camp I think that um, I should just go straight down and home um, if I'm going to do it properly we'll see we'll see but yeah it's been a good um been a good welcome back i should have put a little bit more water in this but that's fine um this is really tasty actually mm. i had that fire pot chili con carne last night um it wasn't horrible i won't buy it again it was um just not not great if i'm honest so um yeah i'll not be getting that again but it was edible and it sent me to sleep that's for sure and uh, but this is uh, really nice Exp uh, adventure food expedition breakfast nice really nice apples and raisins and stuff in it lovely Although the tent held up well, it wasn't the most comfortable night. That um, self-inflating mat, that carry more thing, it's not the most comfortable thing. It's warm, but it's not very comfortable at all. And um, for some reason, I don't remember having any trouble last time I pitched here. Maybe I'm just a little bit too far over or something, but I was on quite an uneven bit of ground and I kept sliding down. I managed to solve it in the end, I just shifted over a, a bit and found, managed, to get, managed to get like a, a balance but it involves like going at a skew angle across the tent and took a bit of working out but I got there um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting another mat I'm looking at those Seat to Summit ones as well as, as much as I'm pretty much set on the, uh, the, the X-Therm the, the, the big deep thick Seat to Summit ones look really good and apparently they're very very comfortable but um, I think bang for buck, comfort, weight and um, uh, warmth are value. I think the uh, the exterm's coming out on top at the minute. Anyway, I'm waffling. I'm waffling. I'm going to eat my breakfast, get the tent packed up and then I think I'll just take a, a steady walk straight back down into Edale and get away home. <laughs> Man, this is amazing. Just amazing. I'm going to turn myself around, face that way. Enjoy this view for a little while longer while I finish this. And um, I'll speak to you in a bit on the way back down. Cheers. So there we go. 6.30 in the morning. All packed up. Of course, no trace left. Other than a bit of flattened grass, but hey. You've got to flatten a bit of grass in your time, haven't you? And what a wonderful, wonderful morning to come back to.
absolutely stonking. I um just oh, look at that. It's just beautiful. Um if I swing you back a bit, you might be able to see it. See what I'm pointing at? Just pouring over the ridge. Gorgeous. Absolutely bloody gorgeous. Um I might have to stop and do a little time lapse of that before I go, I think. Um Fantastic night. I've made the decision. I'm just going to head on straight back down where I came from. Stay in the spirit of the things, of the thing, and get myself away home. So um, I'll probably have a chat at some point on the way down. I want to stick the camera back on the tripod and uh, get a little time lapse of that. I think. In a bit. you can make that out but that's one hell of a spot for a pitch see if I can zoom in there you go right on the edge of the cloth hell of a spot got all the people's coming around the bend but yeah that's one hell of a place to pitch if that's you and you're watching this, morning, hope you've had a good night. So before I drop back in the, uh, into the village, I'll uh, say my final piece so I don't get all camera shy if there's loads of people around. I've just seen my first human of the day. Well, apart from those two I saw over on the brook, uh, the clough, sorry. Um, the trail runner's just gone up there. Um, what can I say? <laughs> How wonderful. I know I've kept saying it over and over again, but why did I stop doing this? Why did I stop doing this? So, onwards to um, gear upgrades because, as I've mentioned, uh, I do get uh, a lot of pleasure from uh, researching and uh, hunting out nice Gucci kit. Um, Shelter-wise, I'm really surprised at that nature hike, um, Cloud Peak 2. I mean, when I bought it, I'd seen all the hype, you know, and you kind of, yeah, it's just a banshee all over again, isn't it? Um, but I just thought, I, don't, I just need something to get me going um, until I can, uh, uh, until I'm in a position to, because a shelter really, as long as I've got something to get me through summer, that's all I needed, realistically. Um, so I just figured 120 quid, it's what, you know, it's going to get me going, get me started. And if it's no good, well, it doesn't matter. I've lost nothing. But actually, when I pitched it in the garden, I was actually really surprised. It's, um, it's actually very, very good. It's well stitched. It's well put together. Um, sorry, waving the camera around. It's, uh, it's a damn good piece of kit, to be honest. For the money, it's really well made. Um... And uh, having spent the night in it now, especially in a bit, a little bit of weather, it wasn't obviously that severe, but I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Tent isn't for me though. I don't like the faff of all the poles and all that malarkey. I definitely want to go back to a, a trekking pole uh, type shelter. And like I say, I've, I've got my eyes on uh, probably a duo made. I might, 
drop on something else. Because of course the other problem with that nature hike thing, it's massive. It's 2.7 bloody kilos. Um, it's just ridiculous. It's stupidly heavy. Um, and that, you know, I don't want to be lugging that around all the time. I didn't actually mention my weight in my pack. So as I've said, the first time I came up here, I think I had about 18 kilos on my back. And that was with just the, the Lux Mini P2, which I think was only about, I think 1.8 kilos or something all in with the uh, with the, the, the pole and everything. I, I don't think it was all that heavy. But um, uh, I, yeah, I had 18 kilos on my back. Well, I've come out last night, including that massive tent. Bear in mind, I'm on a budget sleeping mat. I've got me full winter waterproofs in there that I've just bought. I've just bought a Rab, can't remember the name of the jacket now, but it's a full heavyweight waterproof. It's like 600 grams on its own. And about, I would say, I brought far too much food. I think it was about one and a half kilos of food. And I was still only tipping the scales at nine and a half kilos with a 2.7 kilo tent on the back. So I'm kind of happy with that. It was, you know, it's, it's not, this, this nature hike pack thing carried it well. See what I mean? That's sitting nicely on my hips now. Everything's in line, but this pouch thing's just way too high. It's it's just annoying. Um, but hey, you know, not the end of the world. It's a 70 quid pack. But yeah, I think I, I can't wait to get down to a more reasonable weight shelter. When you consider when I had my trail star, even with the inner, it was like, I would have dropped two kilos there. I think it was about 800 grams for the trail star. Still nylon trail star with an inner. Um, The, um, the shelter's way down the list. I can manage with this, but it's just really heavy. Really, really heavy. And I need to, I, I've, I've just got to remember that. So I'm not too bothered about what I'm carrying at the minute. I just weighed it out of curiosity. And I think it was 9.6 kilos before I put any water in. And incidentally, I only brought uh, one and a half litres of water. Well, yeah, one and a half litres of water up, um, which uh, was only just enough to get me dinner and, uh, and breakfast done with the coffee. Um, by the time I drunk a bit, obviously. So there's a lesson, because of course there's no water on the way up here. Silly Billy. Right, so I won't say anything else now, um, unless anything major happens. I'm just gonna have a, a nice gentle stroll back down into Edale. There's a buzzard mewing over there. Um, I've got little buntings and pipits up buzzing around a little bit. I actually do a little bit, I started doing a little bit of bird watching again, but I can't recognise little brown jobs. I'm terrible. Um, I, I, I need to sit and get a little um, app up on my phone so I can recognise them. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, much appreciated as always. I know it's been a long time. Um, for those of you who stuck around and stayed, subscribe to me, fair play, because I got a lot of grief when I said I wasn't doing any um, wild camping anymore. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try and work on the editing a little bit now. Looking at YouTube recently, <laughs> there's some amazing content coming out there and I'm never going to be able to compete with that. And I don't really want to. These videos really are only for my benefit. I, I, I like sitting and watching them myself. Um, and if anybody else enjoys them, then that's just a bonus really. Um, but yeah, thanks very much guys. I much appreciate it as always. Um, I'm buzzing right now. <laughs> I'm absolutely buzzing. Right, home time. Catch you all later, guys. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.